I made my entire well-being pretty much dependent on if my music would be liked by other people. That's why we're going on this trip. Hopefully something cool comes out of it. And maybe nothing comes out of it, but that's fine too. This is not about output. It's about reconnecting to my first love, really. Ooh, that's a good guitar. I need to try this Marshall myself. My god, that sounds good. To be honest, I thought about stop playing professionally. And if I learned one thing from this one week trip, it's like... So, I'm not quite sure how to start this video. I don't even know what kind of title I have for it. But here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go on a one week trip down to the south of Germany, which is like a four hour train ride. And during this week, I'm gonna be in a rehearsal space with a band, rehearsing some of my songs. Stuff you've never heard before, for the most part. I'm also gonna be at Nick Huber, uh, in the Nick Huber workshop, because believe it or not, Nick Huber and I, we have been talking about doing a guitar just for me, which is a very, very cool thing. Uh, I'm also gonna be on the YouTube channel of a friend of mine who's also a guitar player, has a German YouTube channel. And um, I'm also going to be in a studio with a friend of mine who runs a studio just to work on creative ideas, maybe do a couple videos, maybe write a little bit. And all that stuff is pretty much happening uh, in the span of one week. And I'm about to hop on a train in like an hour from now. I guess it's important to talk about why I'm doing this. And I need to go a little bit into the depths of the past two years here, things that I've never talked about on this channel, but uh, definitely something that uh, might be interesting to some of you guys, because maybe you've gone through some of the same things that I've been going through. Really, the central thought that's been dominating everything I wanted to do musically in the last couple of years was, why even do it when nobody cares? And I kept wallowing in this kind of thought that everything I'm doing pretty much musically nobody really has an interest for and nobody really cares so why put all the work in why put all the time in for the longest part that was the thought on my mind that really dominated everything and it kept me pretty much in a cage musically creatively to be honest i thought about stopping it all together to be honest to stop playing professionally and stop playing for people uh stop recording in studios and all that stuff and maybe just noodle around here at home just for myself but then uh, last year, things changed for me um, for a couple of reasons. First of all, all the feedback you guys gave me on Instagram, on YouTube, all the people reaching out pretty much saying, hey, where can I buy this track? Are you on Spotify? Are you in a band? Why the hell is this not a record? Why don't you have albums out? Why are you not in a huge band playing? When you see these comments on a daily basis, you keep thinking and uh, you keep thinking about maybe giving it another shot. Second thing was, I read this book by Rick Rubin. Here it is. It's called The Creative Act, A Way of Being. And that book really put things into perspective for me. In this book, uh, Rick Rubin basically says, as a musician, as an artist, you do music. That's what you do. That is the work. You put in the work. Because if you don't put in the work, you're not an artist. You're not a musician. Everything that happens after that, success, money, followers, fan base, gigs, that is pretty much out of your control for the most part. But that can't hold you back from doing music because that is your work. That is the work you need to be doing every day. I made my entire well-being pretty much dependent on if my music would be liked by other people or if music would be successful in any way, shape or form. But realizing that it's not so much about that. I mean, it's cool to have success and all, but it's not so much about that. But you owe that stuff to yourself. That really uh, flipped the switch for me. That really resonated. That's why we're going on this trip. This is part of why I wanted to go on this trip. I wanted to like break free. Break free in every sense of the word. We're going to do a freaking one week vlog of my trip down to the south of Germany and hopefully something cool comes out of it and maybe nothing comes out of it but that's fine too this is not about output this is about breaking free so with that being said let's get started I got a train to hop on
right, so we're on our way to rehearsal right now. Where I'm going to rehearse for the first time in maybe two or three years. Definitely felt a little rusty uh, this afternoon when I actually tried to warm up for it a little bit. Because I have to get reused to singing and playing. Because I'm writing my own songs. I'm also singing. And the guys are probably already waiting. I'm not sure. We'll see. But we're on our way to the rehearsal. The main thing is going to be... Uh, is it going to be exciting again? Is it going to spark a fire again? So it is inspiring enough to go back, be motivated, and write songs again, all that kind of stuff. Let's do baby steps, baby steps here. Let's just do like a first rehearsal, first rehearsal, and that should be good. And then we go from there. I'm just so looking forward to playing with those guys. I respect them so much. They're great musicians and uh, taking the time to play a couple of my songs. And yeah. Let's see how it turns out. What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this is the day after the rehearsal, actually the morning after the rehearsal. I kind of needed the entire night to process everything that was going on, but safe to say this was a great first step to get into it. I actually had a lot of fun. The first thing I noticed was how absolutely exciting it feels to stand in front of like a half stack again. You know, I played this Fender Supersonic and man, just like the... Uh, wave of sound coming from that stack hitting you right in the chest was a feeling i haven't experienced in a long time and also playing the songs and there were certain moments when we were playing uh a couple songs when we would for instance hit a chorus and i would just be so affected by it and so hit by it that i would just smile because that would be my reaction and it was the same thing for the other guys as well it was that kind of connection because even without saying anything, you're like, wow, we really hit this chorus right. It felt so good. And it, and everybody in the room could feel it. It was really, really nice. Can't complain. Cool first rehearsal for me to get back into the game. But there's a couple more things on my list, as you know. So to sum this up, this could be the very first part of just like breaking free and breaking into the realms of music making again. That sounds a little corny, doesn't it? But... It's the only thing I can come up with right now. It's in the morning. What do you guys expect? All right, next little seven out of the car. I hope you don't mind, but I'm on the road a lot because I need to go from A to B to C. And we're on our way to film a video with the YouTube channel Heart Guitar, which is a German guitar YouTube channel, fairly new. For me, it's really about all of these things, connecting, sharing reach on YouTube, talking about stuff that I'm really interested in. So, another step to reconnect to this entire craft, to music, to guitar playing, to all these things. Which I guess is going to be the title of this vlog at the end of the day. It's about reconnecting to my first love. I think that's going to be the title.
see that guy behind me? That's Oliver Hartmann. This is his studio, Hard Guitar. That's the one. The YouTube channel for German guitar players. Look what he's got here. Small stones, diamond compressors. Is that your signature pedal, the Hartmann? I got to have one. No, it's uh, a guy from California. Or, <laughs> I, I got to have it. <laughs> my name on it. Sure. No balls, of course. Why not? And what else do we have? An old Ibanez Les Paul copy? Of course. What is it? Nick Huber. Of course. As bold on. Of course, as every German guitar player would have one. <laughs> and uh, what's this? Tell me about this one. That's a pretty old. It's older than I am, and I'm old. Pre-1975 Ibanez with an original DiMarcio Puff. Oh, yeah, it sounds awesome. And what is so cool about it? It sounds warm. It's, it's got punch. So it's got both punch and warmness. Look what Ollie's got here. Hughes and Kettner amps. More Hughes and Kettner, Hughes and Kettner amps. amps. Hughes and Kettner cabinets. Amps. And more Hughes and Kettner stuff. And 1961 Fender Showman amp. 61. 61. Only a couple of them were made um, for export. So this is 220 volts and um, it's not working right now. So I had to fix it. Okay, how does it sound? Awesome, warm. It's got like 25 watts. So it's um, got a nice crunch. 61 Showman with 2x15. Two 2x15, by 15. Two by 15. really nice. Yeah. That's got to have some serious low end. And we are done with filming. And uh, I just said goodbye to Hard Guitar, aka Oliver Hartmann. And um, I realized I have over an hour left before I actually go to uh, Nick Huber's workshop. And uh, that's why I might want to check out that one vintage guitar store that we have in this region, which is Guitar Point Maintal. Let's see what they got. Custom shop, that's Paul P90's gold top. It's a new one.
Fred is going to play uh, a 1974 Marshall Plexi with post face master volume for us. PPV master volume. <laughs> Anything about um, is about the volume of the guitar. So if you turn it down on one or two, like that, now you have the clean amp sound. <laughs> doesn't compress so much which is no, cool because you have the raw power of the, the full power of yeah, the amp. yeah yeah you have a tone that just full range from yeah, clean right. to dirty that's it yeah thank, thank you. you so much fred no problem you're welcome okay guys i need to try this marshall myself <laughs> compression at all with a mid gain tone no compression you rolled down the volume and it actually was a roll down and gain and not a roll down and like volume like you, you literally had this edge of breakup tone and geez, i've never heard that before because whenever i try plexis the thing was they were so loud you couldn't really tell what's happening because it was already so loud in your ears it was really hard to have like defined nuances that you could actually hear but the, with this like post post phase inverted master volume it really sounded so so good it was it was a, it was a lot quieter it still sounds so good it didn't change the mids like a variac would do 
not at all. It didn't get saggy like uh, that kind of power soak thing you would do. It just went quieter. It just sounded so good, like no compression. And I love that because you actually have somewhere to go with that if you have some pedals. It doesn't compress too much. That hyped me up pretty good. Now let's visit Nick Hoover. Also, let's not forget, shout out to Fred from Guitar Point for standing in front of the camera, even though I didn't know the guy and just playing a couple tunes for us and sharing his knowledge for us. He's like a plexi guru. He's told me he's written articles for magazines about different plexis. The knowledge in this room far surpasses anything that I know about amps in general. So thank you so much, Guitar Point. Now off to the Cooper. Ta-da! Let's see if anyone's inside. Now I have to. Ring a bell. This is Nico, Nick Hoover's okay. son, because Nick Hoover is fixing my Surfmeister right now. And Nico is going to show us the workshop at Nick Hoover Guitars. Here we go. Come in. So that's our entrance area with the. A lot of wood. A lot of wood. Here's where it all starts, right? Here it is where it all starts. You see the blank and body blanks. Here we have a wonderful dolphin very nice wonderful cnc machine called terminator cnc machine <laughs> with a skull very nice so that's gonna be that's gonna be most probably a crowd cynic that's very very cool cool flames yeah yeah what is nick doing i think he's fixing your guitar is he fixing my guitar <laughs> Let's see, what does the maestro do? The maestro is fixing the surfmeister. He's soldering, apparently. Somebody destroyed his pot. Who was it? Tell me who was it. <laughs> okay. Nick needs another minute. Here we have machine heads, finished bodies. This is one of my all time favorite Nick Huber colors. It's candy tangerine. Candy tangerine. This is also a cool color. Gold top. More candy colors. Candy tangerine. That's a candy apple. More assembled, kind of assembled guitars. That's going to be a cloud stuff, right? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's also a neck, right? Yeah. Wow. And this is the dry room. It's always fun to see what's in here. And there you go. You can see all different kind of colors, different kind of wood specs. Shell pink, right? Yeah. Black. Oh, wow. What's that called? That's, a shot, I guess, a light a charcoal burst with uh, like burl maple. Nice. Here's a nice burst. It's going to be an orca. I'm a huge fan of this color here. I've never tried a reed burden. You should. Let's see if we can get you a lefty. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's rare. Next, over next. Over next. next, frets, inlays. We should check out the silver burst, Nick says. Where is it? Oh! Silver burst Krautster. Ready to be assembly. Yeah, that's another flame neck. <laughs> another <laughs> flame go. neck in silver burst. That is something else. <laughs> How does it look? Yeah, exactly. Can you turn it around? Adam Jones comes to mind. Upstairs we go. What's upstairs, Nico? Uh, there we place the guitars ready to be shipped out. Okay, so there we have a Surfmeister. Golden hardware, golden big speed. That's the nail complete. Such a good color. It's somewhere between purple, blue, and a little bit of rose, yeah. if that's a color. <laughs> <laughs> Looks really, really cool. Nice. A very cool color. It is. It's a peat. In a metallic look. Gray metallic? Yeah. Wow. It's kind of similar, similar to our copper finish. If you look closer. Okay, 
final stop on the reconnecting with music tour here. <laughs> uh, we're gonna visit a friend today in his studio. Uh, I've known him for 10 years now. He's one of the most creative musicians I know. Brilliant songwriter, brilliant uh, composer. And uh, we're gonna visit him today, spend a couple hours in the studio and uh, maybe write something, maybe record something. Just being creative, nothing has to come out of it. I need to get out of the way here. And that's what we're gonna do right now. Let's visit Christoph Hessler. This is where we'll spend the afternoon in this room with a lot of gear, with the mothership pedal board, cool amps, cool guitars, including mine. And I don't know what happens. We'll see what happens. Let's see. session in the studio ended with a cool track now it's time to talk about the final thoughts because this is going to be the end segment of this vlog of this one week trip i want to know how was it for you did you have fun was it interesting to you to watch me do all that stuff for me it was the first time to actually talk about something so personal um, i usually talk about music guitar related things and not so much about personal stuff, but this was really personal for the first time ever. And it was also my first attempt to do a vlog, a vlog that would span over a couple of days. I guess what I want to say is sometimes the secret to get out of a rut is to just start doing the things you love again. The rehearsal was great because it made me realize I need that connection with actual people. I can't just sit in my home studio all day. I just need to be a practicing and working musician because uh, that just makes sense to me. And all the other activities I did throughout the week also were great and I really enjoyed every aspect of it. There wasn't a single thing where I was like, I don't wanna do this again, I'm not feeling it. I was always very hyped to do all these things. But let me tell you this, and maybe you notice it throughout the vlog, where things really changed for me, where I had my come to Jesus moment, if you will, was when I sat in front of that 74, Marshall Plexi and sat right in the beam of that full stack. That really was the moment where I was like, God, I miss this and uh, I need this in my life. I need noise in my life and I need a loud guitar amp and I need a guitar. And that's something I didn't know I was missing so much because that feeling when you get hit in the chest by a stack, there's just nothing like it. And that doesn't mean I need to play a 74 Plexi every day in my life to be happy. Quite the contrary, actually, because my ears would probably not survive that. But that moment, I realized there's something to this that I cannot put into words. But when I am in that situation, sitting in front of that stack, playing with a good guitar and hearing that sound and feeling that sound, I feel right at home. I don't know why, but when I hit a note and I bend the string and that just makes me feel good. I can't describe it any other way. I hope that's understandable for all you guitar players out there. And I didn't experience this for a long time. So I guess it was absolutely time to reconnect with musicians, playing real amps, talking to the maestro Nick Hoover about a new guitar and about guitars in general. I think it's really mattered to me. And if I learned one thing from this one week trip, it's like, I need to do this a lot more. I need to make space and time in my life for these kinds of things a lot more. 
and uh, that's what I'm gonna do. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon. Can hardly be myself. I don't want no one else. This is the end of all the past beginnings. I know where I belong.